statute. We'll see you next time on Call for Help. Have a great day now. Bye-bye. Coming up tonight, we'll show you how to increase your Replay TV recording capacity. And Joshua is going to show you his favorite new games announced at E3. Plus, Bert Monroy is here with a rusty Photoshop trick. Live from the Tech TV studios in San Francisco. Patrick Norton. And I'm Kevin Rose. Thanks for joining us on the Screen Savers. This is the place where you can be sure to get live product demos, interviews, tips and tricks, and of course, the very best in computer help. Ladies and gentlemen, plus, <laughs> it's jam-packed tonight, Photoshop extraordinaire, well, we should say Photoshop expert extraordinaire, Burt Monroy is in the house with another amazing technique. We've got more highlights from E3. Joshua, you're, you got, you're like double booking, you're double dipping yeah, on the I'm show. all over the place today. I've got my, my favorite games from E3, which aren't the most popular games, perhaps, mm -hmm. uh, or, the, or the most well-known, but I, I have those, and then I'm going to The things you think we should know about yeah, from that's E3, right. but some, we're not going to hear about other hidden places. hidden gems, exactly. if you will. Hidden gems, I exactly. Like that. That's good. Yeah, and then I'm going to show you how to upgrade your Replay TV for cheaper than you can to buy a bigger one from the store. Very cool. So a, a Replay TV Say hack. Some cash. That's right, a hack. Very good. Yeah. And, of course, we got live questions being answered. Dan has the number Hello. and his new toy. I got a new toy today, or yesterday. I got the uh, Sony DSC T1. Not so bad. Have you paid off your overpriced graphics card No, he yet? has not. Did you put this on the same credit card? He did, indeed. <laughs> You're not setting a this good example for our nation's children. <laughs> I'm sorry, You're kid. like the debt monster. You're, no, Pat, I am. You're getting him in trouble. His you're, mom right now is, is probably so mad. Well, his mom's she like, well, no. He shaved. He shaved. No, he, he didn't, shaved. Yeah. And he, didn't, he didn't know. <laughs> Look, this is the new camera I bought yesterday. Yeah, his he, mother knows he, now. Yeah, but he told him that he she paid off the graphics the card. <laughs> you now, lied to your mother? Well, let me tell you. I have a, a debt fund. If you want to give me money, 888-989-7879. And if you want to give me support, it's the screensavers at techtv.com. There you go. And if people want to... Oh, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off with the tech news that caught our eye today. Sarah has the first story. I think it's very convenient that Dan also left out his last phone bill, which was $650. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I gave you... Uh, sorry, People think, Phil. What, 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 can, we a, can we get a round of applause for the long-distance relationship long phone call record? There we go. What can I say? If you've had a higher phone bill due to a long-distance relationship, email us at the screensavers. No, actually, well, that's from we three. Dan has Sarah three different long-distance relationships. Like, he's juggled, uh -oh. if you will. Yeah. Aww. And a new, <laughs> and new camera? And a new camera. Sarah at techtv.com. We want to hear about those monster phone bills. No, we don't. <laughs> I don't want to know. All right. Moving on to the news now. Thirteen companies from Japan, the United States, Europe, and South Korea have joined together to form a new organization called the Blu-ray Disc Founders to help promote the Blu-ray optical disc and to compete against the rival HD DVD. <laughs> Sony and Samsung are two of the high-profile companies that are participating. This is interesting. Yeah. Because uh, the whole HD DVD thing I thought was going to be the next standard. Right. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, all these companies are getting together. Right. And, and they're saying, no, no, no. So uh, since time immemorial, it's like there's a new tech standard, whether it's like 56K modems or 33K modems right. or CDR or whatever it is. Well, not CDR, but like DVDR slash dash R slash dash R. Or DVD plus. Right. And now, once again, when everybody's like, well, should I, you know, should I buy a DVD burner now or should I wait until the next standard comes out or should I buy that? Or, and it's like, once again, we've managed to completely divide the industry, at least... It's all about the money. At least it's not quite an even split this time. It's like a 13 companies versus two companies kind yeah. of thing right now. It's interesting who... I mean, they're jumping bandwagons back and forth. Like the Plus and the Dash. Right. Apple was always Dash for the longest right. time. And then Microsoft started pushing the Plus, and then all of a sudden Apple's like, hey, we'll do Plus too. It's like, 
You've seen this thing happen. We're going to see it again. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's good for consumers if everybody has one standard, and it would be even better for consumers if it was the best, most functional, highest performing standard. But it, it just seems to be whoever piles on whichever, but you know, whoever has yeah. the most momentum wins. Very true. So, you know, hopefully Blu-ray will actually ship. It'd be really funny if like Blu-ray is delayed while these 13 companies are right. like Blu-ray. Just wait for Blu-ray. So I think it's going to be whoever gets the market first is is going to have a huge advantage. That's true. We will see. Mm -hmm. We will see. Bring back the LP. <laughs> Windows, contrary to popular belief, Windows isn't the only OS with holes. A new security exploit has been found in Mac's OS X. The hole could potentially allow hackers to run Unix commands via a web browser exploit. The scriptable Mac Help Viewer can be launched via web link and will execute any Unix code embedded within the link. Mm -hmm. The exploit works with all browsers, including Safari, IE, and Firefox. This is pretty crazy because there's yeah. actually a demo that you can download and test out yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, Scott Moschella, who's behind the scenes here at the screen series, he was telling us that you launch the link, right. it opens a shell, a terminal, right. which, as everyone knows, based on uh, OS X, is based on BSD. Yeah. That is like the heart of your system, and you can execute any command from that yeah. shell prompt. There's, yeah, there's definitely two things going on here. One is the fact that there's, this is a definite, definite problem. It's definitely Apple's fault because it's related to the help file system inside of OS X. Right. And Apple's been like, well, no one's really exploited it. It's not that. I mean, people started warning well, them about this back in February. I was going to say, yeah, he. And there's still not a fix. However, if you want to go outside, we've got links up on the show notes, and what's interesting is you're going to need a program called More Internet, and we'll post the links to download that and how to basically patch mm -hmm. your system so you're not going to be able to be yeah. subject to this. It's just another one of those cases of they knew about the hole, why didn't you fix it? Mm -hmm. Apple? Steve? I'm talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> He's Thanks, not sir. watching. No well, way. if anybody sees Steve, tell him we're yes. missed. <laughs> And, you know, someday we're both going to buy Apple notebooks, then we'll really be mad. That's right. <laughs> but not today. Thank you, Sarah. You're Thanks. Welcome. Have yourself a lovely show. Happy hump day. Woo-hoo. Woo. Justin. On the Tech yeah. TV Netcam Network. From Hughesville, Pennsylvania. How hey. you doing? Good. Yeah. How you doing, Justin? Not too bad. What can we help you out with today? Uh, yeah, I was wondering what does System Restore do and if it can get rid of spyware and adware. Ooh. Ooh. Well, um, it's not what I would use to remove. Do you have, like, some sort of spyware or adware or nasty little program in there that SpyBot Search and Destroy won't remove or, or adware won't remove, Justin? Yes, I do. What is it? Uh, it's, it's a file that's hidden, and it, it says Gator on it, but it normally it lets it, everything get rid of it, but okay. now it's not. I tried uh, SpyBot and I tried uh, adware. That could be because Gator claims and sues vigorously over the fact that Gator is not spyware. Right. <laughs> so yeah. what have you tried so far? Just give us a rundown. If you, you've tried Adaware, you've tried SpyBot Search and Destroy. Are those the only two you've gone up there and, and used? Yeah, so far they're the ones that I've found I know that, that uh, have worked. A lot of people are, re are reporting good things about right. the McAfee anti-spyware application, which you can download a free trial of which is supposedly, it, mm -hmm. the cool thing about this one is it detects things in real time. It reads your memory just like a virus scanner will, right. and when something's about to be installed on your machine, it halts everything and then removes the uh, spyware and or adware right. that is being installed. Um, you might want to give that a try. Also, uh, Pat, you have some recommendations for stuff like this. Yeah, I mean, in theory, right, Gator, you should have Gator in your system because Gator changed the name to Clary a while back. If you do a search for Gator on Google, there's a bunch of different sites that will tell you how to get rid of it. Have, have you ever run System Restore, Justin? Uh, yeah, I have. Okay, so you actually have it up and running on your system? Yep. Um, you know, the problem is, is it sounds it sounds a lot better than it actually is, at least in my experience. So if you, you know, basically if you have System Restore turned on, what it does is monitor your main disk. Um, running it is, is it can be a tremendous pain because you basically have to launch a control panel and it goes to like a last known good configuration right. like they used to do in Windows NT in 2000. Um, you so could it's try it. It's going back to an old registry and going back to some... Right. It's rolling back it, yeah. some of the changes that you've done. It shouldn't touch your data. In theory, right. it also, it shouldn't really touch your installed applications. What it will do is roll stuff backwards. You can try it, Justin, but you're probably yeah. better off figuring out, doing a search on Google and figuring out how to manually remove... Um, Hijack this, Yoshi holds up a sign. How to manually remove Gator. Let's, let's check out that That's one. a good application. Yoshi recommends hijack this. So you might want to do a search on Google for that. He said it's a really good application that he's used in the past. All right. So, 
Those are two options to give a try, and uh, we always do ghost when we back our systems. At least I do. Mm -hmm. I ghost image. Do you still do that? Is that how you're making primary images of your system? Pretty much. For Actually, the, I mean, the, the truth is, is like there's only one system that I do all my experimentation on, like one system. Keep it separate it, from your work stuff. Exactly. Yeah, same here. <laughs> the rest of them I just blow <laughs> out and rebuild constantly. Um, Yoshi, is it hijack this? Is it an application name? Yeah, you can get it on download.com. Download.com. Download. Cool. Okay. Thanks for the call, Justin, and of course you get a TSS T-shirt. Because you were on a net cam. Yes, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just getting started. Photoshop artist Burt Monroy is going to show you how to give your art a rusty look. It's very cool. And after the break, well, yesterday we gave you the hottest announcement E3. Today, Bertano's back with his personal favorite games you might not hear about anywhere else from E3, the gaming convention. Coming up with the screensavers continues. G4 Tech TV, coming May 28th. Stay connected. We sent Joshua down to E3 last week yes. where you showed us just the hottest releases, the, the hottest PSP, titles. Doom right. 3. Doom 3, Half-Life 2. But today, out of my hidden gems, my your, your favorite, favorite picks. picks. Right. All right, let's take a look. So far at E3, we've seen some of the biggest announcements. Half-Life 2, Doom 3D, Nintendo DS. But the next games I'm going to show you are some of my picks. They may not have the best graphics engine. They may not be from the biggest developer, but I like them. This might be one of my favorite games here at E3 this year. I started with Leisure Suit Larry and the Land of the Lounge Lizards, looking for love in all the wrong paces, Passionate Patty and Pursue the Pulsating Pectorals, and on and on. Now it's Magna Cum Laude. Tell us about the game. All right, uh, Leisure Suit Larry Magna Cum Laude is an update to the series. You're playing as Larry Lovitch. He's the nephew of Larry Laffer from the original series. He's a college student. Uh, he's hopeless in love, just like his uncle was. When we uh, designed Leisure Suit Larry, uh, we designed a number of mini games. As you can see, I'm steering the, the sperm icon, and as I hit green icons, uh, that chooses what Larry says. If I say the right thing, uh, Sally Mae likes me more, and my heart meter goes up. If I say the wrong thing, Larry says something really stupid, and my heart meter goes down. Here we have the Tapper game. Uh, in this case, Charlotte, who's the activist on campus, uh, wants Larry to distribute flyers to people uh, about monkeys and uh, monkey rights. So when can we see this game? When can I buy it? Leisure Suit Larry Magna Cum Laude will be on store shelves in October of 2004. Now, lucky for us, we ran into the gentleman who does the voice of Leisure Suit Larry, Tim Dadabo. All right, where are the girls, man? Cut it out! If you've ever wanted to take over the world, this is the game for you. Tell us about Evil Genius. Okay, uh, you, you're basically playing the role of an Evil Genius. Uh, we've got three Evil Genius characters in the game. The sort of major part is uh, training your minions. So once you've trained up these characters, you've got their special skills, you send them around the world on missions. Missions are to steal objects and to uh, bring them back to the base. Um, they'll kidnap pop stars, they'll steal works of art, they'll uh, bring them back onto the island. And that's when my technician will research them and the uh, research will uh, will uh, give me components that I can use to make my uh, my world domination, my master plan, my doomsday device. When can I buy it? When's it on the shelves? Um, we're shipping September 28th. I think it's pretty obvious behind me that's the Lucas Arts, the big huge screen they have running back there. They have some big Star Wars titles. They have Republic Commando and Star Wars Battlefront that are coming out. They look really good. The first push and shooters for consoles, but I think Lucas Arts made a huge mistake when they canceled the Sam and Max reunion game that was coming out. They canceled it not too long ago, and so when I was really looking forward to these Star Wars games, I keep making them forever and ever. We'll always see Star Wars, but I was really wishing for Sam and Max. I don't know about you guys, but I consider Bikini Bottom my second home. If you can believe it, on the Game Boy Advance, you can watch SpongeBob SquarePants to your heart's content. This might be the best game ever made. As you all know, I have a bit of a pirate fetish. I love pirates. I've been playing it since 1987. You said it's been around 17 years. Yes, that's right. Uh, originally on the Commodore 64, yes. and it was also ported to five systems after that. The first thing that uh, you'll see is that you know we still have a it's an open-ended Caribbean world. 
where we can you know sail around the entire Caribbean and, and do whatever we want. What's new about this is that it, you know, obviously it's in a 3D world. Um, also, the fact that I can duel against, I can battle against two guys at once. It was always one on one in the original game. But right now, I'm just going to go in and get into a sword fight. Ooh. I can jump and duck. I can thrust and parry, and I can have high and low attacks. If I'm doing really well, my crew's morale is very high, so they fight very well, and they whittle his crew down a lot faster. We added the ability to uh, dance with the governor's daughter. She's giving me signals with her hands to tell me which way to go, and if I follow along, then, you know, she it, it makes her heart grow. If I hit perfect timing, then we do that little twirl right there, that little flourish, which makes her like me even more. Right. Well, when can I get this game? When can I buy it? Uh, it'll come out in November, uh, just in time for Christmas. So as usual, E3 is far too big to see in one day. My picks, the three you've got to have, Leisure Suit Larry, Evil Genius, and Pirates. Check them out. I'm tired, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm going home. I can't believe yeah. that Leisure Suit Larry is that's, coming out with another that's title. That's number eight, I think. That is so that's crazy. I remember that from way back in the day, the BBS days, and downloading Leisure Suit Larry and online. And CGA and EGA graphics, yeah. even. There's, E3 is huge mongus. Any other it, cool it's ones? It's amazing. There, oh, City of Heroes is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game where you're uh, uh, superheroes. Mm -hmm. There is World of Warcraft, another MMORPG. Is that an add-on or is that a new Warcraft all, altogether? All, new. all, all that's altogether. Cool. And then, actually, they had a Far Cry Instinct for the consoles there uh, that looks really cool, too. How does Far Cry look on a console, though? It I mean, looks nice, but, you know, it? the, the, it's controlled situation. I right. don't know. It, it looks nice. Okay. It looks cool. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Joshua. Now, still to come, our favorite Photoshop expert is back with another Photoshop technique you can impress your friends with. And up next, we'll troubleshoot a randomly rebooting laptop with our next caller. That's all when the screensavers continues. G4 Tech TV, coming May 28th. Stay connected. Don't forget to register for tomorrow's Screensavers LAN party powered by NVIDIA. Go buy Unreal Tournament 2004 and practice, because that's the game we're playing. This week you're going to play the Assault game type, which we played a while back in the demo. The gist of this game is that one team defends a base while the other attacks it, then you switch sides and see if you can do any better. So go to our website right now, click on Join Our LAN Party to register. You've got to own the full version of Unreal 2K4 to play. We'll see you tomorrow for the LAN party. Back to you guys. Thank you, Joshua. Now, Anthony joins us on the Tech TV NetCam Network. Where are you calling from, Anthony? I'm calling from uh, Anadam, New Jersey. Excellent. Cool. Is that near your hometown anywhere? You're in New Jersey, it's, right? I think it's at the opposite end. What, what part of the state that, is that in, Anthony? Around central Jersey, around Somerset, Piscataway. Well, it's about an hour north, mm. an hour and a half north. Cool. How can we help you today, Anthony? Uh, I have a Dell and Spirion 1100, and for no apparent reason, it just starts shutting down when I'm in the middle of doing work for school and stuff. Now, are we talking uh, rebooting, or are you talking like actually shutting down Windows itself? Just pow no power, no nothing. Just okay, so it okay. turns off. How long have you had the uh, Inspiron, Anthony? Uh, since July of last year. Have you traveled a lot in your backpack, made a lot of mileage, moved around a lot, been dropped on a lot of desks kind of a feeling? A little, but not too much. I'll put it this way. Do you have the notebook anywhere nearby? Uh, I have it across the other side of the room. But, One of the things you might want to do is pick it up and kind of flex it in your hands. And if you can feel the actual mm -hmm. physical case of the notebook flexing, it's probably, that's, you know, there's, there's a strong possibility that you've actually got loose connections in there. Mm -hmm. I've seen that mm -hmm. actually happen where over time a notebook, the loose, like literally screws will fall out of the bottom of the notebook, they'll loosen up, things will get, you know, loosened inside, and you'll shift it or you move it, or yeah. you'll just happen to hit a part of the keyboard Components funny. flex wrong, or they touch each other. Exactly, and, and it'll kill the power yeah. to it. Now, there's, th it's always hard to uh, troubleshoot a random reboot, whether it be a desktop or a laptop, right. but there are some things that if you've done recently, mm -hmm. might be causing them, one, yeah. installing weird types of memory. Memory that has gone wrong or bad. Yeah, or if you, yeah, I was gonna say, but it's funny because like a random reboot's almost easier to, to test than this because you can right. see like you know have it you know it's do I have bad memory in the system? You run Memtest eighty six. Right. You know, have I recently loaded a weird application? Do I need to unload it? You know, is it a virus? Is it a? But if it's your if your system's just going cold, black, and dead, yeah, it's almost always a hardware issue inside the box. It works frankly. sometimes. It sometimes it doesn't. Like, I'll be working and it'll be fine for like. Two weeks, and then, like last weekend, I was doing homework, and I lost the whole report. Ah, uh, that's no good. It sounds like you need to, one, you need to get in the habit of hitting, like, control S, control save, like, 
every 30 seconds. Or set the auto save to just one minute, so every one minute right. it just automatically saves for you. Um, two, you're going to have to I mean, basically make sure the, the battery connection is good, that you've got you know, good battery power, make sure you're not, you know, the, the cable's not coming out of the back, and make sure everything's nice and tight inside the notebook. That's about all you can do, Anthony. Yeah, um, and I mean, you could try reinstalling the operating system just in case it is a software problem. Right. After that, you're going to have to call Dell and get on the phone and have the technician come take a look at it. Yeah, hopefully it's still under warranty. But we but do have a T-shirt for you for being on. Isn't that nice? You can use that to wrap your notebook in before you can throw it in the American <laughs> River, which is, sounds like you're probably going to Rutgers if you're in Somerset. It's a, and I can, there's a perfect bridge for it, too. You're tearing stuff up. I know. Now. Anyhow, good luck, Anthony. Here's Sarah with a quick tip. That's right. Astronomy lovers, listen up. There's a lot going on up there this year for links to upcoming events like this summer's meteor showers plus solar and lunar eclipse dates. Just go to thescreensavers.com slash show notes. We put something good together for you. And grab a blanket in your sweetie, lay back, and wish upon a star. Now, don't go anywhere. Joshua will be back to show you how to upgrade the hard drive and your replay TV. Might come in handy. And after the break... Create a rusted logo against concrete in less than five minutes. Our Photoshop guru, Bert Monroy, says you can do it when the screensavers continue. Welcome back to the Screensavers. I'm Patrick Norton. Coming up in this half hour, do you have a replay TV? Do you want more space to record your favorite TV shows? Joshua Brentano shows you how to double the capacity of your replay, plus Leo joins us to show you how to use the terminal in Mac OS 10 to back up your files and see if USB 2.0 is in your future. We're going to tell our next caller how to install that on their system. But right now, once again, our resident Photoshop guru is here to show another wicked Photoshop trick, the one and only Bert Monroy. Always good to be here. Good to see you again, man. Always good. This is officially wicked cool. Wicked, yes. Well, this is another one of these request things. People mm -hmm. are always asking, how do you get rusty type? This is another one rusty that I got type. now. So I decided, well, I'm going to combine it with a nice background to put the rusty type on top of. So we're going to start over with a nice blank screen as mm -hmm. usual, right? And I'm going to give it a gradient right across here. I'm going to hold on my shift key to constraint. I'm going to throw a nice gradient right into that area there. Now I'm going to give this a filter. I'm going to go to texturizer, and under texture, i got texturizer here, and... I'm going to give it that little, just the default right there, and that's going to give it a nice little texture so it starts to look like stone, right? Got it. And layer right on top of that, I'm going to take my paintbrush, and I'm going to pick this, uh, this get this small guy right here, and I'm going to go into my brushes palette, and I'm going to give it a little variety. I'm going to go into my shape dynamics and give it a little size jitter, and you can see what's starting to happen down here. It's starting to cool. make the line very uneven, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go draw right through here this big crack right through the concrete, another one there, maybe a little one going across here and down. Then I'm going to make the brush a little smaller and just throw a bunch of other little cracks right inside here just to make it look real, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give that layer a layer style of bevel and emboss. And here it is. And you can see right back there, I'm going to increase the depth so I get stronger lights and darks here. I'm going to turn off global lighting because I'm going to do something with other layers in different directions. Have that light coming from above, and we see the effect right there. And I click OK. So now we can start having these nice cracks going on in That's there. That's amazing. Now, I'm going to take this uh, brown here. I'm going to take my text tool, and here mm -hmm. comes the text. So I'm going to type in the word Kevin. Now, I've used your name before. I've used everybody's name. I, ha I haven't used Kevin, so I figured I'd throw yeah. Kevin in there. Yeah. So let's make it a little bigger, let's say 200 points right there. And what's really nice about the text tool is that you can do a lot of things with it, right? Mm -hmm. I can go in there and I can twist it. Let's just say we do a little scaling right here, do something like that. But what's really cool is that I can go in there and say layer type, create a work path. You see? Now, let's just turn this guy off. We don't need to see that. And let's turn these other guys off as well. Let's turn this off and turn this off, and we'll turn off the crack so we can see just the background. And what's cool about the, the work path is that I can go in there and select a part of this path and move it around, so I can go in there and distort things, right? And once I have it, I can go in there and let's just say in this layer I can take that path and fill it. So I have a whole other bunch of text, right? So I've taken the liberty of going in here and creating my own, which looks like this. Wow. I took Kevin and really made it snazzy. Let's turn on our concrete again and put our cracks back in there. Oh, not that guy. That's, there's our cracks right there. Now, I'm going to give that logo the same filter that we gave before, the texturizer filter. And I'm going to go into the layer styles for that layer. Right? So we'll go in here to layer styles, and this is where we're going to create all the effects that we want now. I'm waiting for layer styles to figure out what it's doing in that <laughs> layer. There it is. 
comes in. The first thing I'll do is give it a drop shadow. Now, I want this light to come from below, see? And since I had the global lighting turned off on the other one, it didn't affect my crack. So I'm going to go in there and just go from below, make it much darker, and increase the distance a little so it starts to give it a little more drama right back there. You can see it. Uh -huh. Then I'm going to give it a bevel and emboss. And I'm going to say give it a chisel hard so it's really hard edged. Increase that uh, depth on that as well. And I'm going to change the color of that white and give it a nice kind of a golden color so I get this gold color back going on back there. And then finally, I'm going to give it satin. And satin is going to introduce all these nice little tones in there. What I'm going to do is give it a, a bright yellow color, like that, and set this up to screen, and we can see what's going on back there. I'm going to change the contour to a really busy one like this. Wow. And we can see what's starting to happen in the text back there. You can see all this stuff happening. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with the size until I get these nice little blotches going through there, just like that. So I get these nice little blotches, I can click OK. So now that we have our nice metal text going on there, now we want to age it. So we want to crumple it up, make it look kind of like in the Lord of the Rings, that kind of a thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that layer, and I'm going to give it a layer mask. Hide all. See? It disappeared. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the text into a selection. Mm -hmm. And since I'm in the mask, I'm going to go ahead and fill it with white. So now we can see that we are now seeing the text. I'm still in that mask, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the mask a filter. So I'm going to go into brush strokes and go over here to spatter, and you can see the spatter is going to give me all these rough edges over here. So when I click OK, my text gets all broken up and all nasty there, and then I do this, and then we get this nice little text going on. When I use Photoshop, it looks like an angry four-year-old with crayons. Well, Amazing. all you got to do is read the tutorial online. It's all there. Speaking of which, you're actually going on tour pretty soon. Yeah, actually, starting in August, I'm going to be doing a different city uh, each month mm -hmm. all over the country. I'm going to travel around, spending a whole day teaching stuff. So basically, people can sign up for a workshop and, and go to see you there? Yes, it's going to be announced on my website. Mm -hmm. There's no announcement yet. As soon as I get the actual so page of cities. Keep it on .com, yep. it'll be up. It'll be there. And you actually have CD tutorials that are being sold now. Yes, I do, from lynda.com. Yeah, they've been, in fact, I'm going to go down and shoot a bunch more mm -hmm. pretty soon on those. So that's lynda.com. That's right. Bert, you're amazing. Thanks. Your books are amazing. If you want to learn more about Photoshop, buy the books. If you missed a step, first got a detailed tutorial at thescreensavers.com. You should definitely check out. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Our next caller is looking for a USB upgrade for his laptop. Stick around. We're going to tell you what his options are. But after the break, in less than 20 minutes, you can double, triple, or quadruple your Replay TV recording capacity for less than buying a bigger one. Josh was going to show you when the screen savers continue. G4 TV for gamers and Tech TV are contesting to form the only network taking digital entertainment to the next level. Sound fun? I love video games. Plugged in to every aspect of games, gear, gadgets, and gigabytes. That was unexpected, right? Okay. We're uh, watching G4 Tech TV. G4 Tech TV. Stay connected. Coming May 28th. For more information, go to G4TechTV.com. Over Tech Live to see what's coming up tonight. Patrick, it's all about contracts, my friend. Contracts. Contracts. You can find all sorts of contracts online, but a contract for sex? Well, I don't know. That's interesting. Well, listen to this. You got sports stars, celebrities, and college guys worried about charges of rape. These sites claim to give you a binding legal contract to cover your, well, for lack of a Better term, but tonight on Tech Live, see why some couples are actually drawing up paperwork before the action begins, if you know what I mean. Of course, that's coming up right after the screen savers. Technology and shagging, we give it to you all, man. <laughs> Once again, Chris Leary has left me speechless <laughs> and eagerly anticipating Tech Live, which comes up right after it's this show. At least I can do it. All right, then. have fun. Thank you. We'll, uh... I'm just scared of that segment. <laughs> Let's see what Kevin and Joshua are up to over in the lab. We are up to a little hacking over That's here. Right. You know, 160 hour replay TV would cost you over 400 bucks if you were going to buy it in a store. But in less than 20 minutes, you can save over $150 by upgrading the hard drive yourself. Our in house right. replay fanatic, Joshua Brentano, is going to show us exactly how it's done. That's right. 
Step one, buy a replay. Buy a replay. Buy How a much replay. is a replay going to cost? On Amazon right now, $111.09. Okay. For a replay. $111. That's cheap. Yeah. The TiVos are about or $120 after a mail-in rebate, but you don't have to go that. But these are $111 for this. Replay, for people that don't know, PVR, it allows you to record yep. all any shows that you want to watch, much like a TiVo. Exactly. Okay. So let me prove it to you with a little math. Okay. Okay. The replay TV is $430. Okay. $430. Hundred and eleven bucks for the forty hour. Gotcha. That's a hundred and sixty hour. Hundred and eleven bucks for the forty hour, what's my math? And then uh one forty nine for a hundred and sixty hour hard drive. Okay. You add that up, you get two sixty minus four thirty, you get a savings of one hundred and seventy dollars. Nice. So it's better right. to do it yourself. That's right. The math proves that it's better to Save do it yourself. A lot of cash. That's so the first step is to open up the replay. <laughs> and there are there are a number of screws on here, some on the back, some on the side. Do watch out because there are exposed power supply parts mm -hmm. there, so don't touch That's those. Dangerous. They might kill you or yes. blow your eyeballs out or something <laughs> like that. I don't know. Now, the, the, then the next step is you need to buy a hard drive, and any brand of hard drive will probably work. Okay, People have used Western Digital's. Their standard IDE yeah, hard drive. Yeah, I was going to say, standard IDE hard drive, nothing fancy here. No. Well, sort of, yes and no. Okay. Mac Store is, for the most part, the majority of TiVos and replays is the OEM hard drive manufacturer for the unit. Any reason for that? They got in on it early. Okay. So if you open it up, chances are you're going to find a Mac store, but it's actually a special Mac store called the QuickView Drive. I see that right here, QuickView Drive. That's right. Mac and store. it is a hard drive that is specially designed for streaming video and audio. Mm -hmm. It has specially tuned um, seek profiles and a two megabyte cache that's tuned to stream it. Okay. So it's made for just this specific made purpose. Made for just this specific purpose. Okay. That's right. And it runs at 5400 RPM, which is important because the replays act really funky when they get too hot. But you could probably put a 70, put some fans in here with a 7200 sure. RPM. Sure, absolutely could. Have people done that? They have. They put 7200 RPM drives in okay. there with no problems, actually. Any advantage to that, though? I mean, they say they got performance. Your videos play a little yeah, faster. Yeah, play a little faster. No. Uh, they, they say there's a little bit of performance uh, uh, increase, potentially, with okay. a faster drive. But I'm going the safe route with this Maxter drive. The only place I know of to find these drives are at weaknees.com. Mm -hmm. And you can buy a hard drive that's ready to put in or a blank one that, that you can do yourself. Weaknees is show you pretty much the hub for all things like PVR yeah. Related. Yes. They have TiVo upgrades, replay upgrades. Exactly. Cool. And so you get all of that from, from weak knees. Now, the first key is to remove the old drive. It's just some screws and a standard IDE cable. Mm -hmm. That cable right there. Just be careful that things are fragile since they're not designed uh, to be taken out necessarily. This does void your warranty when you open this. But of course, so, as, with, as with anything else. Any good <laughs> hack uh, is guaranteed to void your warranty. Now, the next part you have to do is you have to bless the new drive from your okay. old drive. So what do we have to set up here? Give me the setup over the here is the old drive is set up as source, the original, uh -huh. and the new drive is set up as the as the uh, okay. uh, master. I'm sorry. Uh, old drive is master, new drive is slave. slave so okay. we're going to copy the, the system information over, the partition information over. And that's on your second chain inside of your that's computer. That's on the second chain, right, okay. exactly. So this will only work on Windows 2000 or XP. There's also a Linux version. The program is called RTV Patch, and it's a SourceForge program. So when you take a look here, uh, it, see, it sees there are two hard drives. One it sees as a for replay disk, and the other is the big one here, the big daddy that I'm going to bless. 251 the 250 gigs. Right. That's right. Is uh, going to be the it, that's the one, the new one. So, so what you have to do? Ex explain to me what blessing is before you do this. I mean, as you're doing it, you can explain. It's it. it's essentially a special for it's specially formatting the new drive. A to special work with file the system. That's right. Okay, There's special partitions and uh, some other information in there okay. to, to make it all work. So the first thing you do is you choose your old one as the source and your new one as the target, and you can back up your original information. It's mm -hmm. about 500 megs. You can burn it to a CD. That way you hang on to that. So you take that in your, hard, your old hard drive and put it away. I see. And, and it and says copy MPEG. Can you also back up all the videos on you there You can, well? but it doesn't always work. I don't recommend it. Okay. Uh, just start clean. Just figure it's going to be a brand new drive. And then you copy the system partition. Do you really want to proceed? Yes. And that preps the new drive. Okay. Then step number two, once you do that, is to uh, patch the drive down here. There's a patch button. And you can also copy your photo partition over. I don't have photos uh, that photos, you keep on there. Uh, photos okay. Exactly. And you hit the patch button, and yes, and it will patch it for me. And I'm not going to walk through this. I'm not, I'm not going to screw up that drive. I say screw up. Sometimes it's hard to go back mm. to Windows format. It's running a real funky type exactly. of partition. You can go back sometimes. Sometimes people right. have had problems. Uh, and then it will. It usually it takes literally less than ten minutes to go through this this process right here. Mm -hmm. Maybe even five minutes. What about after that? After you're done blessing the drive, and when you're it all done up? blessing the drive, uh, you shut the machine down. Mm -hmm. uh, you set your your uh, new drive, the new Big Daddy drive, to master, 
and mount it back in your replay. So just plug it back in. Plug it back in. Is that in. all there is to it? That's all there is to it. Really? Put it all together and boot the replay. It'll do a bunch of configuration. It takes several minutes. Then it'll shut down, and then you turn it on one more time, and you have all this. So space. you can really do this in about 20 minutes. It, I did it in less than 20 minutes. Nice. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Cool. For step-by-step -step instructions that you must follow to the letter, you have to make sure you do it exactly right. like, the, like, like the step says. Check out uh, my article at thescreensavers.com. You can also get links to these quick view drives. It's all there. That's a great way to send some cash. I'm going to buy one of these. Do 111 it. bucks. 111 dollars. That's cheap. Yep. Let's check in with Leo for a quick tip. A little tip for you Macintosh terminal users now. If you're a Mac user and you want to create a little, sh a little shell script to automatically back up your files, learn from my experience. You could do it all wrong. Turns out the Mac file system, especially old Mac files, have more information than the traditional Unix CP and TAR commands support. Things like resource forks and creator and type data. If you back up files without that information, you may corrupt them and you may not be able to use them and your backup will be bad. For a while I was using a little script using tar to take all the data in my mail folder, compress it into one file and uh, then I used gzip uh, to squeeze it down. Worked fine until I had to restore that data and suddenly I couldn't open my mail. Turns out I wasn't copying the resource for it's very important on the Mac. Now Apple has created a special Unix command just for you guys called ditto. In fact, if you want to know more about ditto, you should just open the terminal and type man ditto. You'll get a whole lot of information about it. Ditto is a great little tool because it copies the resource fork and the type and creator data. So you see this ditto command I, I put right here. This one works. The, uh, the C uh, in the ditto command creates an archive file, a zip file out of it. K says you use zip compression instead of the standard, which is CPIO. And then this is the most important part, this dash dash RSRC. It says copy those resource forks. And then I could copy all the, fold all the file in, uh, files in this mail data folder into a zip file and use it for a backup. If you're going to use the terminal to backup, and by the way, it's a great idea because you can use cron then to do it automatically. You don't have to think about it. You can make automatic zipped backups. Uh, and you can rsync them then to an external folder. But you've got to use the ditto command, not the C or the tar command. Learn from my experience. Don't do as I do, do as I say. Back to you guys. Thanks, Leo. Come up after the break. USB 1.1 is out and 2.0 is in. But can you upgrade it on your laptop? We'll tell you right after these messages. Be sure to catch tomorrow's show. Why? Leo and FCC Chairman Michael Powell are going to take behind the scenes of the FCC. Sarah's going to show you how to customize your save as dialog box, and Yoshi's got some tips and tricks on power supplies you won't want to build a system without knowing. It's all coming up on tomorrow's edition of the Screensavers. Now, Greg joins us on the phone from Cullowee, North Carolina. Cullowee, Greg? Are we even close, Greg? Uh, no, I'm way out uh, on the east coast in the mountains. Okay. North Carolina. Oh, no, 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 no. What are, are we even close to pronouncing the name of your town? <laughs> Is it oh, Cullowee? Yeah, yeah, you got it, Cullowee. Okay. okay. Small little college. <laughs> now we're nowhere near no, you. Not, not close. We're, we're in close. close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so can we answer a tech question since geography? Yeah, I've got a Dell Inspiron 8200, mm -hmm. and I've got the two USB ports in the back. They're both 1.1, and I was wondering if there's any way I could upgrade those to USB 2.0. Uh, the ports that are in the back of the system. Uh, any way at all. I've got the two uh, card slots in the side as well. Yeah, I'm that's what you can. Yeah, my, you've got a really? PC card slot. You can add a USB O two, you know, USB 2.0 PC card adapter, kind of like this mm -hmm. Wi-Fi adapter. But you're not going to be able to update the slots in the back of the system. Not at all. Nope. There's chips right. on there that control the USB spec, right. and they're not flash upgradable. It's uh, you're not going to be able to do it. The only way to do it is yeah. with a, with a card. But they're not that expensive either. I looked online and they're like fifty, sixty yeah. bucks. In fact, if you buy a kind of a no brandy one, you can pick them up for as little as twenty bucks. Really? There yeah. you go. You can get them really cheap. Good. What's that? I said that sounds good. Yeah. Are you going to use it for like an external hard drive, or what do you need? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm using it for. Yeah. I've got an 80 gig external hard drive, and yeah. it's just kind of running slow with the 1.1. It'll run a lot faster with the 2.0. I've seen some Excellent. other ones also. Just to let you know, you may want to look and see if there's ones that also have a FireWire slash USB yeah. combo. There's some of those uh -huh. out there. That way, if you ever decide to have any FireWire devices, if you don't already have mm -hmm. a FireWire port, you can yeah. have that own one card. Those tend to be bank. Though, they are a little more, more expensive, but if you ever, you know, decide mm -hmm. to go down the road and decide to do any digital editing or hook up an external FireWire hard drive. Or that's an option as well. camera or something. That's true. Sound good, Greg? It sounds excellent. Thanks, guys. Take Thanks care, for the man. call, Greg. Yep. Now let's check in with Dan for a helpful tip. 
complete guide to command lines in XP. Well, if you do, Windows has a help, has a help file that describes them all. You're, you'll be able to defrag, scan disk, and a whole lot more in no time. So what you need to do, click on start and go to run. And then from there, you need to go to this C Windows slash help slash ntcmds.chm. That's all in the show notes. Don't worry about that. You don't have to worry about it. Then just click on command line reference A to Z. And you'll see once you go through, there's tons of different command lines to your heart, to your heart's desire. It's lots of fun. Command line. Woo! Yeah. But anyways, there you are, because we're going to check our inbox. Final email's time. We're going to see what you're thinking about. All that when the screensavers continue. Wow. Yes, I do. First question. Uh, this is from Clive in Ontario. He remembers the day that your iPod went blank, Kevin, and mm -hmm. he says, what happened to those songs? Did they reappear? It's funny because I took it home right. a few days later because I had to go to town and all this stuff, so I didn't get a chance to play with it right away. But when I hooked it up, it said that there was a corrupt, something was corrupt on the hard drive itself. So what I, I, I then did is I was actually able to browse the hard drive and all my mm -hmm. songs were there. It seems like the index file somehow was messed up so mangled. it couldn't read. Yeah, it was mangled. It couldn't read uh, exactly what was installed on the drive. I ended up having to reformat it completely with the Apple's uh, utility that they have. And then I started from scratch and it works fine now. Wow. So Strange. It's, it's, it's comical collected. Yeah, just one of those weird things. Which brings us to another question. <laughs> yes, this one's from Chuck. Another iPod question. I'm wondering what the main difference is between the iPod and the iPod Mini besides size and the $50 difference. Mm, and the fact that the early iPod Minis have had some issues. Yeah, right. the, <laughs> the big difference I have to say that I love most about the iPod Minis, I've had the, the previous generation iPod, uh -huh. and that this one is, is actually really scratch resistant. I haven't had one scratch on the glass or the casing itself. Really? So they've done something, they've put a coating on there somehow, but Zero scratches. Because the, 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 the ones with the chrome back, like oh, it, geez, it gets all completely it, scratched up. It gets scratched up, it gets fingerprints, it gets nasty yeah. in the front of it, gets scratched up. So of course, you've also been keeping your iPod Mini, I've noticed, in that little sweat sock felt <laughs> contraption. Like, every time you pull it out, it's not you go in your backpack sock. and you, like, reach out and you undo this well, thing. I like and you, to, you know, I, I keep good care of my stuff. You know, I, 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 <laughs> Don't do this to me on TV, Patrick. You brought the, the thing out on TV. I did, I did. It's my little carrying case for it, and so I happen to like it. It looks like they may actually have them back in stock again, do they? <laughs> the iPod Minis? Yeah, they're uh -huh. starting to ship them again now. They were sold out for the longest time, but uh, they're finally starting to get some back in. Do you wish it had? Do you wish it had more uh, capacity, or are you pretty good with that? Uh, it has enough capacity. Hey, look, ladies and gentlemen, in a black suit in shades, Leo Laporte working out. <laughs> You know, Leo's going to give away stuff to our audience. It's very nice of it. <laughs> Sarah, let's get another. Somebody get, get to another email question see if Leo wants Are to jump sure? in on this one. Why not? Any other surprises? Hey, you okay. never know. This is live TV. Next it's one's from Kevin. Surprises. I'm looking at getting a new laptop that will be primarily a desktop replacement. Is there any new hardware coming out in the near future that's going to cause a major price shift? In other words, should I buy or wait? Ooh. Mm. Well, we've seen some gaming laptops in the show. With yeah. the upgradable, upgradable video cards. They're very expensive, very heavy. And you know what? Gaming laptops are kind of a bad idea to begin with because it's like, you know, it's 11 pounds. You're not going to want to leave your house except to, like, carry it to a LAN party, set it down. You're going to be afraid somebody's going to steal it because it's like a $4,000. And then Doom 3 comes out and, and it's no good anymore. Yeah, and it's really, you know, if you're looking <laughs> for a desktop replacement like Photoshop and movie editing and web browsing and all that kind of stuff, you know what? The, you probably don't need one of those 11-pound notebooks. Anything with a, a Centrino processor and a half a gig of RAM should take care of it. Um, the big ones, the really big desktop replacements, they're heavy and they don't do much more. Yeah. And they don't run that much faster. So a lot of times they put a desktop processor in there and then you end up with no battery life. So. It, 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 yeah, in any case, there's no major developments yeah. coming out in notebooks. The Dothan processors are out, which is the latest little bump of the Pentium. A little and bump up in speed. Yeah, it's a, nothing you know, crazy though that we've seen lately. Nah, nothing major, and you know you can go ahead and buy a system now. But we'd say, or I'd say, I shouldn't say we. <laughs> I'd say go for something like a 600M or something that's a little right. lighter and a little more portable, because the desktop replacements are just heavy and they don't get good battery life yeah. and they don't run that much faster. Very true. Unless you want a game, in which case buy a 12-pound notebook. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Look at who's here. So as you know, guys, I'm, Friday's the last day for call props. I'm going to a new business. And I just want everybody to know, screensavers buttons, uh, any kind of screensavers tchotchkes, look for them on eBay. I'll be autographing them, selling them. 
<laughs> Whatever you want. Will Old you shirts. Are you shoes. Awesome? Will you be doing repair? Woo! It's repair? Very Anything nice you want. Shoe. Whatever you want, I'll do. <laughs> Leo, you know you are always welcome here. This What's with it. the glasses? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, who is uh, this guy? Yeah. That's big it. Shot. I'm not there for this. <laughs>